Welcome back to the channel everyone. Now I am here in Stansted Airport as I am about to go on a 48 hour adventure. Now the place that I am heading over to is a place that many people say that once you've seen it you can die and that is the city of Naples. It is a cold and dreary day here at London and I think I've packed for winter and I'm really dressed for winter and let's see how the Mediterranean weather is when I get out I made it past security in what felt like record time and for anyone who is traveling out of Stansted guys I do urge you I was quite lucky because it was included in my parking as I drove here but pay for that fast track security that probably saved me a good half an hour and it was probably the most seamless security I've ever had going through an airport so fast track remember that next stop Naples Made it here to Naples and like I predicted, beautiful weather, I've packed for winter London weather. Definitely need to change out of these when I get a chance but now it's just about finding the alley bus to take me into the city of Naples so let's see if we can find that. Many people say see Naples and die. That is because the food here is absolutely amazing and one of the foods that Naples is probably most known for is pizza, especially the Neapolitan style pizza. When you think about it, it's born for success. You've got the tomatoes straight from the soil of Vesuvius enriching it. You've got the lovely mozzarella. But many people say that the best pizzeria is here in Naples. L'Antica Pizzeria di Michele. And right now this place is legendary. So many people will come and visit this place. And I am going to check it out. You get a ticket, it's normally that busy and you need to wait until you are called up. So it's literally right there, so I'm waiting for my number to essentially get called out. But it's crazy how packed it is, there's already a queue forming outside it and it's only in midday. <laughs> This place is absolutely buzzing. Like it's such a fast paced environment. What a place to get a pizza. I've never been to a place like it. It's literally somebody rapping here. Oh, grazie, grazie. My friend, my friend. <laughs> literally just finished that pizza and what a crazy experience. Like literally, I was walking around, landed in Naples, didn't have Wi Fi, was trying to walk aimlessly and literally found this place by accident. Like I've been meaning to go here, but just to stumble upon it so early and I thought, you know what, why not, let's just have it now. And wow, I don't think I've ever been to a pizzeria quite like it before in my life. With it. It's basically pure organized chaos. And just look how mad it is now. Just look how crazy it is. Like, the queue for it is just absolutely insane. Okay, the queue for it is insane. I had a lovely chat with a Finnish gentleman there and he was telling me all a bit about Naples, what to do, where to go. And it was quite a nice conversation actually. But yeah, so guys, that pizzeria is hyped as one of the best in the world. And I can very much understand why. Like I had the half margarita, half marinara. And for me, the marinara side was so much nicer. But that mozzarella, I don't think I've ever had a mozzarella quite like it before like it just tasted fresh it tasted so different like i'm not as used to it so guys if you do come to naples that is a place that you 100 percent need to check out and visit okay it's reason why it is one of the best pizzerias in the world it's literally michelin awarded i think they've got michelin stickers there so michelin have basically recognized it all your favorite celebs have probably been here it's that good. Mm. 
Now this is the thing about Lagos. A lot of people say that it's not safe, it's dangerous. And the amount of people that told me, as soon as I told them I'm coming here, just be careful, don't get robbed. And it just feels like it's got its own sort of buzz and its own vibe. Like, this is absolutely mad. I mean, it's only been one hour, so come back to me at the end of the day. But this, this place looks cool, this place is wild. And I tell you what, I was tired from this morning because of that early start to the day. And I've not even had a coffee yet. I literally found that pizzeria by mistake. But man, has that woken me up. So the Neapolitan adventure begins now. Literally just dumped my stuff in the hotel. And now just wandering around. So let's go and explore what the city of Naples has to offer. While I'm here, I might get myself a Maradona Napoli scarf. I'll tell you what, they are everywhere. And they have a little bit of banter with them. Liverpool fan, crying at the moment, that's what it is. And they're on a high, so it's all a bit of fun. But I'll tell you what, I need to get myself one of those scarves because they are quite cool. Everybody here owns a little moped because they are just zooming around everywhere. But I'll tell you what, right now, I just had an espresso in an amazing place full of Napoli stuff but I just came next door and I'm about to have this little dessert called a baba which is like a little sponge soaked in rum or limoncello so let's just see how it is one of the things that Naples is meant to be really really well known for is that their pastries are top drawer that baba was banging oh stronger once you get to the end of it you take a lot of that alcohol at the end but man that was good but right now we're just roaming down Spaca Napoli which is essentially like a straight road which basically sells a load of statues trinkets food shops cafes and it's packed <laughs> He is a god here, isn't he? Diego Maradona is purely a god here. literally walked around here for maybe an hour or two there's few things that I realize are important to the people of Naples that is the football team Maradona food and dessert those are the key things and how can I forget coffee coffee is so good here and it's so important to the people but I've heard there's a limoncello store that I need to check out while I'm here so I'm gonna see if I can try and find it just left that limoncello shop and it's the nicest owner ever he literally sat me down taught me through the whole process of how they make the limoncello where a local farm gets it and imports it in had me try the limoncello and all the various different three four flavors they've got infused with hennessy infused with bailey's kind of cream style just straight limoncello biscuits he was going in for it so one of the things i need to do is come back and essentially see if it can fit in my hand luggage because I have to buy something from there because it was so good. One of the things that I want to do actually, I want to get up to there, up to the top of Castel St. Alma because you can see a crazy view of the city and you've got a crazy view of Mount Vesuvius. But just check this hill that I'm about to climb and how steep it is because it's insane. All the way up there. Can't see it because of the brightness of the sun but basically going to the top of the hill this walk is an absolute madness i'm just praying the views are worth it and what makes it worse is there's literally no pavements anywhere 
you're literally just walking on the road. But I'll tell you what, it kind of just adds to the madness of Naples. It just adds to it. I found some stairs here, and just when I'm tired, I see the most incredible building because it just looks beautiful with the paint and I'm out of breath. That's all right, that's normal. But look at the color on that. Wow. And I'm nowhere near the top. But look at that view there. A bit tricky to see. But straight over and you can see sea views right there. So I'm just imagining what it would be like from the top of the castle. I've still got to go all the way up there. Help, somebody please help. And I thought I was quite a fit person. You know the saying, we've come too far to have come this far. We're going all the way to the top. We're committing fully to it. go through the castle to get to the top and you gotta pay five euros. Initially I was a bit like nah but I've invested too much in this journey that I need to get to the top and then I need to see this view. I'm sure there's an easier way of seeing a view of Vesuvius and the whole city in the same landscape but I feel like I've invested so much into it and plus look I'm going through a castle that's quite cool no for five euros it'll be worth it. really really beautiful courtyard at the top and because we're so high up after that absolute workout it's got a lovely breathing to kind of cool me down but we must find the studious we must find that famous volcano and that view I think I might have seen it but look at that courtyard from where I was just there that actually looks quite cool but I think I might have found Vesuvius. Well, it's not hard to miss, but I might have found the perfect viewpoint for it, and arguably probably the best viewpoint in the whole of Naples. And to my knowledge, Vesuvius is literally there, and you can't see it because of all of that cloud. Okay, what can you do? Okay. I'm burning. I'm burning a little bit. So I think I'm super unlucky. Paying five euros, come all the way up the castle, get an amazing view of Naples, which to be fair I got, but I want to see a great view of Vesuvius. I feel like we've got low cloud that you can't see any of the volcanoes that are surrounding the area. So literally I've got a great view of the city, but I can't see Vesuvius. So I need to head down to the port, maybe tomorrow, and see it. But thank goodness I've got 48 hours. But I tell you what, that trek up that hill, I can't even call it a hill, it felt like a mountain, for five euros, burns me that I didn't see Vesuvius, but I can't lie. Castel San Elmo, such an amazing place to visit for five euros to get a full 360 panoramic view of the city like it is absolutely beautiful i can't lie like you don't see the grandness of the city when you're down there and it's only when you become high up in such an elevated place that you see how beautiful this city is so if you do come to naples castel saint elmo just pray that it's not a cloudy day or low clouds that deceive you, okay? But now we head back down into the city. And yes, I'm still out of breath from that walk, still trying to catch my breath. So maybe this will be a nice place to just gather my thoughts, chill, relax, catch my breath, get some fitness back into my body before I trek it back down 
because that was a killer. Castle and decided to go a different route, a less killing my legs route. And I've kind of found myself wandering through the Spanish Quarter, and it's dawned on me. I think I've realized what Naples is like. It reminds me, weirdly, a lot of Mumbai, where it's just pure chaos, but in that chaos, it has its own charm to it. Spanish Quarter come what feels like Naples version of Oxford Street. I mean, look at some of the shops they got here. Maca. Literally like shops everywhere. I don't know how literally I dip one street over. Literally I go one street over and it's just a completely different world, a completely different vibe. literally stumbled on that church by accident. I just walked past and was like, let me have a little look in there. But what I love about churches in Italy is that you're always blown away by the artwork that is there. They all just look absolutely stunning inside. Guys, I've just literally come back to my room in the hotel just to chill for a little bit before I head back out in the evening. What I'm gonna do now is switch over to my phone to film because the vlogging camera isn't the best probably when it gets into low light. But yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see how Naples kind of differs from day to the night. But let's check it out, can't wait. At night time, it's even more mad. The motorcyclists literally will zoom past you even faster than they would during the day. Like their Valentino Rossi or something, literally just navigating their way through a crowd. It's absolutely more mental at night. And do you know what? I kind of love it. It's actually wild. It literally just adds to the character of this place. Like, it's absolutely wild. Like, you've just always got a be aware of motorcycles more often than anything it's just what a place and do you know what i actually love this chaos at night it's absolutely brilliant it just makes it such a fun place to visit watching this chaos literally zooming past not bad This place at night is even more crazier than during the day. Let me tell you about that, and it's so exciting. And it's wild because you get all these motorcyclists just literally zooming past you, like the Valentino Rossi at MotoGP. And do you know what? I love the chaos. It's absolutely wild. Like, look at that. He's going quite slowly, but man, it's buzzing here. It's even more buzzing than during the day. I do however want to know why I keep seeing so many chilies around. I'm so curious about it. Like, I want to know why. Like, I see every trinket stall, they're just there.
But I'm about to have a dessert beforehand. I know it's criminal, but it's Folio Della, classic Neapolitan style pastry. So let's see how it goes. It's so crispy, and I've got the lemon one. So obviously with Naples, you've got to have everything with lemon in it. So, oh, it's beautiful, beautiful. I had to stop the night off with a gelato. However, I must say I've got the moodiest person ever serving me. Goodness gracious me. Day two of this Naples adventure. I mean, wait, would, would you say it's day two? Yesterday, I'll tell you, it's my first full day that I have here in the city. It's 8.30 in the morning. Gonna get out, hit the streets of Naples. Don't wanna miss any of the action, okay? Today, we're probably gonna be visiting the poor area this morning. I know the Gallery in Berto's there, the Piazza del Plebiscito, a few castles that are there no more hills at all so yeah we'll kind of see what that port area has to offer for this morning and then yeah see where we head over to it for the afternoon it's a bright but chilly start to the day here in naples no doubt i'm going to come to regret this north face jacket and run back to the hotel to put it away but first point of call i think what we need to do is find some coffee and some good italian coffee top drawer Behind me, we've got a Castel Nouveau on our way to the Umberto Galleria. I feel like every kind of way you turn it is like a little monument that you kind of need to see in Naples. I can't lie, I was right about the weather warming up. Didn't think it'll be this quickly. Literally within 45 minutes, an hour of me leaving the hotel, it was a bit nippy. It's really starting to warm up, so I think this might have been a mistake. I turned the corner and literally found myself in Galleria Umberto and the first words literally I just said was wow because it is absolutely stunning I don't think you've kind of seen a shopping outlet like this before I mean look at that Now at the Piazza del Plebiscito, apologies if I pronounced that completely wrong, but it's a place where you can literally just relax, chill, take in the stunning Italian architecture right there, have a coffee and just relax. And as I'm literally recording this, I finally seen Vesuvius and it's literally right there. So you can literally almost sit, chill and just have a view of a historic volcano as well. You know, one of the things I love about Italian architecture is that it's all so historic and it's pretty much all across the country. It's got that same feel. No matter where I've been, from Naples to Rome to Florence, it's such steeped in its history. And yeah, just look at this. Look at this statue right here. You literally got another one right there. Then I'll talk about the architecture. Just look at that. How cool does that look? And when I talk about it, you can just come up here, just sit and chill and take in the views. Like, this is what I mean. You've got the views of the piazza, you've got the views of the statues, and you've got the views of Mount Vesuvius, all from one point. One of the things that I very much recommend is that when you do come to areas like this where it's high tourist footfall, try and get here as early as you can in the morning because I tell you what, once it's quiet you can really kind of take in the peaceful nature of the area because once it gets crowded I can imagine it being quite busy and especially if you want to take pictures and videos you might not get the best 
quality ones because you're going to see people all over the place. So you probably want to get here early in the morning. Where we are going to go to right now is the oldest pizzeria in the world. Lantica Pizzeria Port Alba, okay? Now, if you're a fan of UK TV like me, you'd have seen Gordon Ramsay, Gino DeCampo, and Fred Sirix head over to this place in particular on their travels of Naples. So I'm so excited to check this out. And I mean, this is history. This is the oldest pizzeria in the world, in the birthplace of the Margarita. And if you haven't already, guys, please do make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel because it will mean so much to me. As what I'm doing, I'm literally looking at Mount Vesuvius right now and it's such a shame that it doesn't get a good shot on the camera because even to my eyes, it is quite misty. But why I keep going about Mount Vesuvius because do you know what, in school, it got drummed into us so early, okay? About the whole Pompeii situation, Vesuvius erupting, that for us it's just like, wow, we finally get to see a little bit of history that we were taught. Do you know what it is about coffee here in Naples and Italy in general? Is that they take so much pride and care into it. You know, while I've been here, I've only drunk espressos. Now, if you was to drink that back in the UK, it would be super hot, bitter, not done properly. Whereas here, you can literally drink it straight away. They give you a glass of sparkling water with it, which is a bit different but I kind of like it because it's there to kind of rehydrate you, cleanse your palate. They take it really seriously. And as someone who loves coffee, love that. Absolutely love it. Now this is the first time I've actually ever done a solo holiday. I don't know whether you can count it as a solo trip because it's only been for like 48 hours, but I get it. I get it. I get why people would do it now. Because before I was always a little bit like, oh, I need somebody with me to have a bit of fun but I understand now why people solo travel and I was a bit nervous because before I came here everyone said be careful don't get robbed watch all your stuff so that kind of put me a little bit on edge when I did arrive but that honestly quickly went away like I can say that everything I got told about Naples being dangerous and needing to be careful I don't think that's true I think obviously like any metropolitan city you've got to be a little bit careful of your stuff but I think that's like anywhere that's if you go to London or Paris or New York but generally I found the Neapolitans really friendly they're quite a safe place and yeah it's not a bad first solo trip to begin with for sure and I need to literally run to my hotel now to literally throw this jacket in there because it is absolutely boiling and to be fair Boiling to me seems hot right now because in the UK, in London in particular, we've been living in Arctic conditions where it's just been super cold. And coming here to a Mediterranean country in March, imagine when I left UK, this was normal. This, my jumpers, they were barely keeping warm. It was five, six, seven degrees. Here, 18, 19 degrees. And I'm sweating already and it's not even 11 a.m. So literally I need to go and dump this in there and pray that. My jumpers don't make me too warm. Now heading to Bar Nilo, the cafe dedicated to Maradona. It is a good time to be a football fan here in Naples. When you think about it, in Serie A, they are leading and look like they could win it, which would be huge for the city. But also, they are a dark horse to win the Champions League. So football mad city might get its rewards. This might be a bit of a crime, but you know what? Fair play, even I was rooting for Argentina in that World Cup for Messi. So they've just got football heritage, Maradona, Messi. Soon there might be one kind of setup of Messi in Barcelona, but here it's literally Maradona at Cool Bar. If you're a sports fan, you've got to come and check this out because it's Maradona everywhere, Maradona everywhere. Like I kind of mentioned Messi, 
let's see right there, they celebrate football here. So if you're a football fan, you need to check out Bar Nilo, the cafe dedicated to Maradona. We're here at La Zica Pizzeria Port Alba, which has been here since 1738. That is a very long time. Now this place has a really different atmosphere as when I compare it to Pizzeria Latina di Michele. It's more of a sit-down restaurant vibe, but it's really quiet and chilled. I'm not used to it with the chaos that is of Naples. about this pizza is it's so light it feels like you're eating a cloud the dough is amazing l'antica pizzeria por alba that was a very different dining experience than i had at the michele like it's more of a restaurant vibe sit down chilled quiet there's no craziness it's not full of people running around singing dancing shouting all over the place it's very very different but the pizzas as well were very different you know this one i felt was probably a lot more lighter the dough was probably a bit better but oh both of them were absolutely amazing yeah and the owner he is here if you ever watched gordon gino and fred the owner is still here serving people greeting people but if you are coming to Naples, that is a place that you do need to check out. Do you know what I want to try and find? A nice rooftop bar. Somewhere I can sit, chill, have a drink and take in some amazing views. So let's see if we can find a rooftop bar. There it is. Mount Vesuvius. wanted to try and find a rooftop bar but I think this right here I've stumbled on by accident might be the best place that I have a drink and just chill and look at this view I think it was a success. This is much better than any rooftop bar I think I can find. Look at it. Beats a rooftop bar, doesn't it? I don't know what it is, but something about being by the water just makes me feel so calm. Like it just feels like I can just switch off and relax. I mean, it's quite easy when you look at this view right here, which is absolutely insane. When I look at like all of my favorite places that I've been to in the world, by Toronto Island, now here, it's just being by water, being by the sea, being by lakes, it's just so calming and relaxing. You know, I've seen a lot of young Neapolitans meeting their friends, hanging up around here, laughing, joking. Imagine it being here. That is insane. Mine was Harrow Shopping Center, St. George's Shopping Center, and it is a different world to having this view. That's for sure. This stracciatella gelato is banging. Woo! Absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing.
some lemon biscuits, but it's annoying that I couldn't fit the limoncello into my carry-on bag. You know, you got that 100 bill, didn't fit in the clear plastic bag, just, which is rather annoying, because I'll tell you what, I tried a little bit there, and it was amazing. The limonade distillery, the limonade distillery, they brew their own alcohol there with lemons locally sourced and they kind of infuse it into the alcohol and oh so beautiful so if you have a chance to go there such friendly staff they'll let you try all of the ones no obligation or anything lovely people limone it's crazy how quick these 48 hours are gone i mean to be fair i'm only probably 36 hours in and i reckon i've done so much so it's been a wild journey but let's see need to find some fried pizza first let's get some fried pizza i do wish i had one more day because if i had one more day i'd have probably gone to pompeii on a little day trip but this is the thing even though i had 48 hours i'm absolutely shattered that early flight killed me i think i'm still recovering from climbing up to castel san elmo that killed me for sure but yeah if you had one more day you could really kind of pace yourself and see everything whereas i think i went full gung-ho with it took that 3 30 a.m drive to the airport went down went everywhere woke up early today tried to get out get everywhere as well so i think it's catching up with me towards this evening but then i can have a lion tomorrow late checkout get some lunch and then sadly I'll be back at the airport so yeah I think one more day 72 hours I might say would be the perfect time to go to Naples maybe go see a surrounding area in Pompeii and that but tell you what it's been a great journey but it's not over yet Was filled with just your basic pomodoro sauce a bit of black pepper and a smoked aged mozzarella provolo and make the dough was absolutely beautiful it's a little bit of a, a sweet salty dough um, and that was absolutely gorgeous however but that mozzarella is definitely something to get used to at first it caught me a bit off guard as I wasn't used to that taste but as I kind of had more and more of it I kind of liked it but then it got a bit too much there's so like maybe if i was to have it again i'd want probably less mozzarella less of that smoked aged mozzarella um in there but no. it's definitely a very nice street food snack it's very much a street food meal quick fast easy cheap and i can see why rookie mistake i made was not getting a drink because now i'm so thirsty after having all of that fried food that fried food has made me so thirsty next time if you are to get it well if you are to get it make sure you get a drink with it don't do what I did because now I'm looking anywhere right now for any kind of drink to quench my thirst Now before I leave, I do have to have one more little dessert. I have to have one more sfogliatella and a coffee, okay? Because when in Naples, why not? I now understand why people say, see Naples and die. It is an absolutely great place. The food is tremendous and I'm still dreaming about some of the pastries. The baba absolutely beautiful a lot of people do say that it's dangerous you need to be careful uh, the moment i said that i was coming here that is exactly what people told me the first thing that i heard be careful don't get robbed watch yourself but being here it's it seems like quite a safe place to be it's very safe uh, the people are really friendly so i don't know i i heard speaking to a few people that they think it's a stereotype that because of the Comora, the Mafia, um, it's got this reputation of being dangerous, okay? Um, also with crime, I think that happens in any major city in the world, 
that you kind of get that bit of crime but as a tourist you're generally okay it's just sort of the pickpocket issue you gotta watch out for but again that's the same if you go to london barcelona paris just small things that you do need to watch out for but listen not everything is good okay first and foremost yes it is extremely dirty you just need to watch your footing for any glass that's around uh, dog extramen i know but that's it you know it's, it can be a very it is very dirty it is gritty it has a lot of graffiti everywhere it can look intimidating but do not worry it is completely safe here you also need to make sure that you've got cash on you because coming from a city like london where it's essentially a cashless society people don't have cash we all pay on card now Naples still uses cash in a lot of places. I think I've been to a majority of my time was split between card and cash and people would generally kind of say their card machine doesn't work, you need to pay with cash. So always make sure that you've got some cash on you, okay? The people are lovely, they'll always try and help you. However, it is important to know a few Italian phrases before you get here because Neapolitans generally will stick to Italian they will not go out of their way to speak English with you and you might have some that will speak English to you however it's good to know a few phrases because that will kind of open them up and allow them to converse with you and you doing that all of a sudden they will find some English phrases that they can speak back to you so just pick up some words when you're on the way and you'll get a lot more friendly locals helping you out overall it is a fantastic place to come I've done it in 48 hours and managed to see everything, the Spanish Quarter, some of the castles, the ports, Spaca Napoli, everywhere, okay? And I do wish if I had one more day, I would have gone on a day trip to Pompeii and gone up Mount Vesuvius. But yeah, if you are looking for a weekend breakaway, Naples is definitely a place for you. But everyone, if you haven't already, please do make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Keep an eye out, there's a few more Naples videos going to be on there, if not already, and I shall see you on the next trip.